Amos 1, verse 3 says, Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing sledges of iron. Throughout chapter 1, Amos continued to rebuke the nations that surrounded Israel for those nations' transgressions. Interestingly, when he, we get to chapter 2 and verse 4, Amos then says, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because they have rejected the law of the Lord and not kept his statutes, but their lies have led them astray, those after which their fathers walked. Amos's point was that God's people and the surrounding nations had sinned against God, which will not shock most Christians, but we do need to ask the question, how was God able to hold those other nations accountable for their sin when they had not received the written law that God had revealed to Israel? The answer to that question is that, like we considered in the previous video, God gave a law to Adam and hardwired that law into us as those made in his image. That is how Everyone is without excuse before God, but that does not answer the question of what law held everyone accountable. So this video, finally to get to the point, this video argues that the law that God gave to Adam, which remained in the possession of even other pagan nations, as it's written in our hearts, was essentially the Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments summarize the law that God built into us by nature. Now, just to show you that I'm not making this up, the Westminster Confession, chapter 19, paragraph 2, says, This law, meaning the one that God had given to Adam as a covenant of works, after his, Adam's fall, continued to be a perfect rule of righteousness, and, as such, was delivered by God upon Mount Sinai in Ten Commandments, and written in two tables, the first four commandments containing our duty towards God, and the other six, our duty towards man. The Westminster Confession, those who wrote it clearly thought that the law that God gave to Adam was then repeated, handed down in writing at Mount Sinai in the Ten Commandments. Now let's think about this through more scripture, though. Romans 10, verse 5 says, For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law. We'll come back to this verse and that in particular later. But that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. The righteousness that Moses described, which, as this chapter of Romans made clear, none of us can achieve, is about doing the commandments. And God didn't invent these commandments at Sinai, though. He wrote them into our hearts at creation when he wrote the, and then he wrote them on stone tablets at Sinai. As Romans 5, uh, verses 12 and 2, 14 say, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin... And so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law, the written law, was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law at all. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was the type of the one to come. There was a law given to Adam. That's clear. We've thought about that in a previous video, but but Paul seemed to draw a connection between that law that Adam had and the one that Moses had. These are the two figures that leapt to Paul's spirit-inspired mind when he considered the law. In other words, the Ten Commandments were linked to Adam. 
and to Moses. This helps us understand why, if we go back to our first passages, prophets like Amos could rebuke the nations for breaking God's law, d- despite having uh, not, not having the written law. Amos did not rebuke Damascus, Gaza, Tyre, Edom, Ammon, and Moab for breaking Israel's ceremonial or civil laws. For, for example, he didn't condemn them for eating shellfish or using the wrong materials in their clothing or something like that. Those laws were specific to Israel. But God's moral law, which is summarized in the Ten Commandments, those commands that that regulate our relationship to God first and then to fellow people, those laws are universal, woven into the fabric of our being as those made in God's image. They reflect his character. And as those in his image, we can't help but have them written in our own DNA. That is why Amos could fire God's judgment for breaking the moral law equally at Judah, at Israel, and the surrounding nations. God wrote the Ten Commandments on Adam's heart because Adam was made in God's image, and these Ten Commandments reflect God's character. I know that Adam also received a specific command about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we will consider that next time as a, as a specific command for Adam. But the point now is that Adam, in the covenant of works, was required to keep and fulfill the Ten Commandments.